Okay, so we'll start with DevOps right there. So, what is the meaning for DevOps? And uh, this will uh, this particular session is will be a demo session like why DevOps and um, why DevOps is required and what is the scope of the DevOps that is going to move to the build phase where we are going to build that application, whether it is a developed in C, Java, Python, whatever the language it is, it is going to generate an artifact. Okay. Artifact is nothing but a single deployable package. Let's say for Java, it can be a jar or it can be a var or like such sort of artifacts will be there. So that artifacts will be generated in this particular build phase. So once the artifacts are generated, so those uh, artifacts <coughs> needs to be deployed into a different particular servers. So deployment in the sense, let's say how we are going to install, um, we are going to download some software from the app store and you're installing in your phone, right? The same way we are actually deploying your particular um, build, nothing but an artifact that deployment is going to happen on your Tomcat or um, any deployment tool, whether you can say in this particular space. Uh, so, and then once the deployment is done, so we need to test it. So the testing can be done in using Selenium, Robo framework, or any particular um, their testing tools. So here also different type of testing will be there. It can be functional testing or, uh, <coughs> or uh, performance testing. Like these types of different testings will be there. And this whole thing is going to deploy on a different type of environments we'll have, like an ST, SIT, UAT, prod, pre-prod, like this different type of environments will be there. For all these environments, we are going to test our application. Then once all these things are done, then we are going to release to your production. So whenever you are really going to release to your production, we call it as a release. So the release can be like, let's say in your Android or you're going to have some versions, right? Like Android 9.0. So then 9.1, 9.2, like that we are going to get some updates, right? For your applications. So in the same way, we are going to tag your particular release and that release we are going to put it into production. So this is the general SDLC life cycle. So all these things we are going to achieve, achieve in uh, different type of models. So this is how the DevOps is actually evolved. Okay. Let me start with the waterfall model. So waterfall model consists of uh, like, let's say a, a work is allocated for you. And uh, uh, around when, when you consider a scale of zero to hundred percent, and your work is done around 95 percent let's say okay so 95 percent of the work is done and then um so your project manager or your client has said hey come and change this particular um, feature then what will happen here so all the work which you have done till the 95 percent it is going to be in vain and again you need to start it from the scratch so that is the main drawback of the waterfall model so how it is overcome in the agile model is so instead of like zero to hundred percent we are going to make it into small chunks zero to 25 25 to 50 and then um, 50 to 75 and then 75 to 100 i'm just giving an example and each part we are going to call it as a sprint in each sprint we are going to do the particular development like whole the sdlc we are going to check it and once everything is done, then we are going to show it to the client and ask them, okay, this is the outcome of it. So are you satisfied or not? Or if you have any requirement, can you please tell us like a feedback and we are going to implement it in the next point. So we are going to have some regular calls with your clients in during every sprint. And then we are going to get a feedback and we are going to improvise that particular product according to the requirement. So that is the main uh, advantage of your agile model when compared to your traditional waterfall model. Then uh, this is fine, right? Uh, why DevOps come into picture? So during this particular phase or your traditional way, so there are certain processes which are very common. Let's say the build process or the deployment process or a testing process. These processes are pretty common. Only that the code development is different. What is different here? So why can't we automate the regular stuff like the build process or a deployment process or a testing process? Why can't we automate it? So that is where the DevOps comes into picture. 
once a developer pushes his code, so rest of the things we are going to automate it here. So previously, let's say zero to around 30 persons are working on the particular project. Okay. Once the <coughs> automation is done, so only three persons are going to can manage the whole uh, deployment or the testing process because it's wholly automated and uh, those three persons are for the maintenance or if any updates are required then only they are going to picture um, so are you guys or any doubts yeah we are good right so please feel to ask me any doubts or like break me up okay so here let's go to the it's um, one of the interview question here so what is the major difference between your agile approach and the devops approach okay so let's go in detail and uh, take it point by point so the first with i'll start with an agile so in agile what we are going to do is it is we are going to mainly emphasize on um, the iterate on incremental approach why i'm saying it is an incremental or iterative approach is so as i told you before so apart from the development after the build the deployment all the steps are will be a common right so those things will be in iterative and why i'm saying it as an incremental approach because let's say zero to hundred percent in sprint one we are completed 25 percent and sprint two we are going to complete 50 percent in the step-by-step -step phase we are going to take it in an incremental fashion that's why i call it as an incremental way okay so the, whereas the devops so what we are going to mainly focus is on communication and integration so why i'm saying it as a communication so because before developing into an automation what do we need to know so we need to talk to your different teams and get to know what is the current manual way so if the manual way is working fine then what we need to do is we need to put some tool stack in place so which can replace the current manual work and if you require any scripts are written so those scripts we need to put it in place so that the current manual work where you are doing that can be done by a script or a particular tool so for these things to get to know all these requirements we need to talk to different persons or different teams to gather the requirements and what they are currently doing and we need to put some automation in place that's why communication is a key role here and then integration so as i mentioned previously so you can see like a build a deployment a testing all these are different uh, teams previously people used to handle so so every part will have a different tool stack or a script so but here when i say is we are going to do a complete automation so we need to link all these tool stack so because once the development is done that the things needs to be automated so then there should be some integration between all these tool stack right that's it integration also plays a, plays a crucial role here uh, are you clear on this point one because this will come in the mostly in interviews. Yep. Yes, it's fine. Yeah. All good for now. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So the next point I'm telling is, um, so we are going to concentrate on the customer feedback as I mentioned before. So after every sprint, so we're going to have a call with the customer and we're going to tell them, okay, this is your requirement and this is your SOW. So, so SOW is nothing but a sign of work, which you are going to have a mutual agreement between your client and the work which you are going to do. So this sign of work is a main reference document that is going to help at the time of a, a project delivery. Okay. So according to your sign of work document, we are going to have a call with your client and we are going to explain, okay, this is a requirement you got and this is the progress you have made. Are you happy with the progress or if you have any feedback, let us know. And then we are going to <clears throat> take it and then we if that is a requirement then you are going to uh, say put that particular requirement in the next coming sprints how you can accommodate it so that's why customer feedback here it is and we are going to have small and rapid releases why is saying a small and rapid releases because say every sprint you are going to have some update right so according to the particular sow we have some work we are going to do that um, each a small update we can release to the market like a dot one version like let's say 9.0 is a 
current release. We are going to have 9.1, 9.0.0.1. That also can be an update. So we are going to have a small and rapid releases when it comes to an agile approach. Whereas in DevOps, we are going to combine your development and operations team together here. And um, in agile approach, so what we are going to do, we are going to concentrate on mainly um, the documentation. <coughs> okay so how these things are done so all this documentation needs to get required but um, <clears throat> so in devops approach um, so we are not much concentrated on the so we will be concentrating on documentation here. but why we are concentrating on documentation here um, so because once automation is done so we are going to hand out to a particular team right so those team members should know like how this automation is designed how how if anything breaks how we need to fix it those things we are going to we are going to concentrate on the documentation part so that's why devops in devops your uh, documentation is the foremost but in agile it is not the way because in agile we are going to concentrate on sprints right in a uh, sprint like uh, the documentation um so mostly we are not going to maintain that so the in devops we are going to we must maintain the documentation so, and where uh, agile which team is going to suitable for your agile approach so when you are having your team is most flexible and responsive then only your agile approach will be suitable so why i am saying it is so once a let's say build team is there and a deployment team is there once a build is done we are going to tell to the deployment team hey here the artifact it is and please go and deploy it. Um, but uh, the particular deployment team person are not available. OK, so and they are not responsive. So even the build is done. So but because of the unavailability of your deployment team member, the uh, deployment process or the whole uh, release process is going to take some time. But that is not the case here in the ops. So we are going to do it one time and going to reuse many times of the particular whole automation process so there won't be any particular dependency so mainly maybe an um, approval process is required that's it so remaining the build deployment testing all these things are going to be taken care of by your automation and that's using a no click or a zero click so this is the major difference between an agile approach and a devops approach any doubts here Uh, hey man, one question like uh, most of the cases this agile and devops go together right it's not a separate entities right it's a devops is an evolvement from agile okay so it's i i told you like the difference between in agile so we are going to follow the same process so uh, where in devops we are going to automate the regular processes which we are doing in an agile process that's why we calling it devops is an evolvement of your uh, agile Okay, thank you. Okay. Let's move to the other slide. So when someone calls you and say, okay, hey, what is Java? So we are going to define some a definition that is stated by its own company, right? Let's say Java is owned by previous Sun Systems or Oracle. What are the Oracle tells this is Java? That is the statement that should go across. In the same way, for all other tools like or whatever it is. But here, uh, when someone asks you what is DevOps, so it is not a what is DevOps, then uh, they are going to ask you what is DevOps to you. So what does it mean? So DevOps is not owned by anyone. Basically, DevOps is a strategy. So how we are going to implement the strategy and how we are going to define it, that is up to you. So when someone asks me the same question, this is my way of uh, defining it is devops is a development practice so why i'm calling it as a development practice because once the uh, the whole automation is developed we are going to hand over it to the development team okay to drive it so that's why i'm calling it as a development practice where will you unite development team and operations team together because so once the development code is done the remaining thing generally will be taken care of operations team 
so but here what we are going to do we are going to take over the operation team and we are going to automate the process and we're going to hand over to your developer <coughs> okay so that's it i'm calling it as a we are going to unite development team and operation team together to make or drive the process seamlessly without any manual intervention because once the whole process is automated there should not be any manual intervention so when the manual intervention is required so if any approvals are required or any update to the current um, script or current um, way of working or any process in change of deployment so only that particular updates then only we need to have a manual intervention rest of the things it needs to be taken care on its own so this is my own way of um, <coughs> stating what is devops devops is a development practice where will unite development team Sorry, and operations team together to make or drive the process seamlessly without any manual intervention. Okay, so by this time you people might got some understanding, right? So why DevOps is important? So the basic what uh, benefit you are going to get when you adopt DevOps to your current system? Okay, the first thing is shorter development cycles and faster innovation. so why because we are going to do it in a sprint basis and we are going to develop everything we are going to automate right i mean everything in the sense the deployment process so we have automated only the development is pending once the development is done we have to other things are going to taken care of and so on. that's why we are going to have a shorter development cycles and the reduced deployment failures so because there when you have some manual intervention there are process um, there chances maybe a human being can make up some mistake right but here once the process is automated it will be same way the machine is going to take care uh, how it has how it is has been written right so that's why we are going to have a reduced deployment failures let's say some something has happened and um, there is some failure there here in this case so we are going to have some roll back also so what is roll back if something goes wrong so then it is going to let's say in uh, 9.1 version okay if something goes wrong then uh, your application may come down right so what we are going to do here so we are going to make that application up by rolling back your version to 9.0 which is working previously so that's where application will be up and the version it is going to be your previous version so we can fix our mistakes and again come with some hotfix so that is nothing but your reduced deployment failures and all and the next one is your improved communication collaboration so as i told you previously so we are going to collaborate with our different teams and get to know what the work is done and uh, if any uh, issues that are there known issues that are there um, in the previous system so how we can accommodate in your automation by taking all the feedback from different teams and we are going to design your uh, automation such a way so these corner cases also will be addressed there okay so next one will be increase efficiencies obviously the efficiency will be get increased because there will want to be any manual intervention over here and the process is also very quick because of the deployment automation so obviously <coughs> there won't be any you know, i mean manual intervention for um, the deployment process so obviously the efficiency will be get increased and the reducer cost on it account head here this plays one of the crucial role in deciding why the why we need to adopt devops so previously when we can say so deployment team let's say i'm just giving an example let's say deployment team had 10 members and the build team had 10 members and the testing team has 10 members okay so once we have how your automation please do we really require 30 members Establish you know right. So let's say like we we can have three members once the uh, uh, automation is in place. So why you require them? Because if any maintenance is there, so we are actually reducing your count head. Uh, I mean head count, and then you are saying salary of twenty seven members to your company, right? So that will be huge cost saving to your company. Um, so even 
with after reducing the cost also we are having a good amount of efficiency in your current project so that's why the companies are adopting devops in place any doubts here Uh, but uh, the uh, even though we are doing automation the kind of work is growing and all those things right so the headcount really will come down with this or how it is really going to affect for managing a team and all so obviously if you are saying like um, so previously uh, let's say uh, deployment process let's simple deployment process so previously the build team are going to tell you and say oh hey i have kept the deployment here take mm -hmm. it and deploy it so that is the only work they are going to do and if any issues are there then they are going to come and they are going to fix that issues okay so this this is how the general process once the automation is done so if any deployment failures are there then the support guys support guys in the sense here devops will come as a support and like the three members you are keeping right so those persons are going to get handled so here we are generally won't stick to a particular different team that depends upon the project where we are so some projects will have a dedicated support guys saying uh, to fix multiple projects let's say like four or five projects are there one devops team will be there if any issues are encountered in that particular project so these guys are going to um, guys i mean they are going to raise a ticket and these guys are going to work on it and um, so as i mentioned previously if uh, there will be one or two persons dedicated for uh, a particular project that depends upon like the person who are had developed that particular automation so depends upon the roles and the project where you are dealing with okay got it any other doubts may know what type of issues will be occur in the manual process and how we can uh, uh i mean fix that issues by using devops can you let us know because i am completely new <coughs> so if you tell then it would be better for this chat so manual intervention in the sense like oh, so let's say if a particular um, artifact is available instead of that particular artifact to have copied a, a wrong artifact yeah that is an example of any issues that are like issues in the sense that can be in in the, during the build process also Uh, maybe you hated a, a wrong uh, command. Maybe those cases also will come into picture, right? But here in this place, so once you have written the code and you have thoroughly tested on different environments, once everything is done, if there is no process change, then how it is designed in the same way it is going to work, right? Yeah. So is this? I mean, I'm not aware of this DevOps, so. uh mm -hmm. is this used for only for build purpose or any other testing purpose build in the sense this is basically for um, <coughs> we are so next up we are going to have it so we are going to combine yeah. your application with your infrastructure also uh, nothing yeah actually yeah. Sorry, your voice is breaking down. We are not fully audible. Sorry, brother. Am I audible now? Am I going? Yeah, a bit manageable. Go ahead. Yeah. And just wait. So, what can we do? Twenty. Sorry, audible. Can you post your question over the chat? Yeah. on the chat window you can post your question navin uh, you are asking something uh, sorry i missed it so okay you are asking about like um, so whether it is only used for the deployment right so previously it, it is not only used for the deployment actually we are combined with your uh, cloud as well so let's say in um, <clears throat> the cloud environment so the infrastructure is also uh, so for the, i mean like the provision of the infrastructure also can be done using the devops tools like a terraform 
and the management of your uh, um, AW infrastructure. Infrastructure in the sake like, let's say, like around 100 servers are there. In the 100 servers, you want to install a particular infrastructure, uh, infrastructure in the sense uh, um, a particular tool stack or a soft, some softwares we need to get installed, right? So then previously, what you need to do, you need to go to the other servers and you need to install it out there manually. So that is a tidy sum process. So instead of that, what we can do here, so you are going to use some Ansible like infrastructure management tool or a configuration management tool. And so we are going to install that software in all the required machines in a single shot. Even that comes as a DevOps tool stack. So here, like we have, we are going to cover across different uh, DevOps tools like like a monitoring space, uh, like a build phase, or else uh, infrastructure provisioning space, and then uh, configuration management phase. We are going to cover like different tools like um, come spanning across multiple um, categories. So we are going to have it in coming slides. So this is how I see the previous traditional build and release model to a DevOps model. So when you see here, the developers will write the code and the build team, deployment team, testing team, environment team. So all these things are going to come into DevOps and then we are going to have developer and DevOps here. The rest of the things we are going to handle, but the testing team will be still be there. So because they are the testing scripts, what they need to do. So they are going to write the testing scripts and we are going to integrate the testing scripts which they have written into our um, automation. This is how your traditional build and release compared with your DevOps. To answer to your previous question, so here are the different tools types we will be dealing um, during this DevOps course. So we'll start with your Linux. So, and then in Linux, we are going to use Ubuntu. And then we are going to use a Git. Git will come under source code management tool. And the Jenkins, it, it will come under continuous integration tool. And then um, Sonar Cube, it will be the quality check. And then Maven, it will be your build tool. And then Artifact, it will be your package management. And then Grafana, that will be used for monitoring and dashboarding. And whereas Telegraph is a database, time series database, which will collect the data uh, that will be used for the monitoring. Sorry, uh, Inflex is the database which will be used for the monitoring. Um, and the Telegraph, which will be an agent. Uh, that will collect the data from different servers um, that will be used for the monitoring. Sorry, Kumari, Auntie. What's up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. And the next one is your Ansible. As I mentioned previously, right? We are going to use uh, Ansible for the configuration management um, to install like multiple softwares into different machines, right? Here, Ansible will come as a configuration management tool, and as Docker. Docker will come as a uh, containerization, and then the CI/CD. All these things which uh, I have term right now, that that will come under the CI/CD umbrella. And as Tomcat, that will be a deployment server, and we are going to have some interview preparation, and then we are going to create a project which involves all these tool stack. Uh, that will be no click automation. So all these tools will be covered during this. So, Hamid, what is the duration? The, the duration will be like um, so only for DevOps. It will be like 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. And the next we are going to have cloud also. So, in the cloud, uh, if it includes cloud, that will be like a 60 to 75 days. So, in the cloud, we are going to use like AWS, that is Amazon Cloud. So in Amazon Cloud, we are going to cover like uh, around 20 plus services. So we are going to have like once we we'll started. Um, so what are the DevOps tools that we are seeing here? All these things will be covered on an uh, AWS Cloud. So that the infrastructure, what you are seeing on my screen, and that will be the same as your screen one because everything you are going to develop on the cloud, it will be same. OK, Mant, are we covering Kubernetes also? A Kubernetes will come as in um, different, um, I mean, different course. So because the Kubernetes itself will take around 30 days again. So there are three different segments here. So one is DevOps. The second one is your, uh, 
cloud <laughs> and, and, AWS, and the third one will be the kubernetes so each one is going to take 30 days okay so it's not exactly 30 days 30 to 45 days it depends yeah. on uh, as it is a personal training some topics will be extended even yeah. some of the classes might be going for doubt clearance itself if you are not clear with some topics entire session entire one hour or whatever you are planning will be going for uh, clearing that uh, doubts only so roughly it will be 30 to 45 days in kubernetes and as part of devops you are going to cover the only the kubernetes basic like an extension of your docker but if you yes. want to be keen on the kubernetes then that is going to take another 30 days if it is only if it is very much required for you and it is required for your project or in such cases the people will tend to learn kubernetes that depends upon the persons and the, the requirement they have so how you are going to explain docker here so how to create the load if you create a 2 gb data in uh, s2 and it will has to alert if it is full then it is has to alert right no, so how are, those things want to get covered those things will be a project specific right yeah this will yeah. be most of a getting started like uh, the basics how what is a docker and how we are going to create docker images and how we are going to uh, where we are going to push the docker images and then creating containers sort of it manages the containers those things are going to get covered but if you are like whatever you have mentioned is connecting with your s3 bucket those things will be very uh, project specific those things okay. want to get covered as part of this okay this this course will be going to get you an um, um a idea on all these tools type and how we are going to implement as part um, that depends upon you we can um, deep dive into it okay So in Tomcat, uh, what you are going to cover in Tomcat means uh, how to create the servers, how to connect to the other, see out from outside environment. You are going to configure all those things. So the deployment process in the Tomcat, what we are going to do, how to install the Tom Tomcat, and mm -hmm. um, how to deploy your artifacts on top of Tomcat, and how we are going to access the permissions. Those things will get covered. So deploying jars and wars, everything, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Thanks, Hemant. Yeah. And so by this time, like you will get to know, like uh, what is the scope and roles and the responsibility we will discuss right now. So <clears throat> the scope of the uh, DevOps and uh, the cloud is. So as you know, the current infrastructure we generally manages in on-prem that will be cost-centric. Right? So, um, so if you want to have some like say big billion days like kind of scenarios, so where the load is extensive high, so we can't have like more systems procured at the particular point of time. But uh, if you have something your environment on the cloud, the scaling will be very much easy and faster in pace, right? even those kind of environment uh, you, that will be easy or else the secondary thing in the cloud environment what you can say is um, so if you want to if you is a startup okay so setting up your data center managing all those things that will be a tradition process and it will be included in your uh, capex right so the generally um, a business strategy should have like um, not more capex and uh, not more opex like nothing but an operational expenditure and capital expenditure those those both should go down so but if you are going, going to have an um, um, normal business strategy so instead of set up your own data center why can't you rent it that's the same strategy here we are going to apply for cloud so what pay as you go so how how much you are going to use it that amount you are going to pay so that is a cloud strategy so that's why the people or the startups whatever the uh, growing companies are adopting a cloud and why you are going to include devops in cloud so as part of your uh, like let's say i am going to create an application so i want to host it in cloud so <laughs> so the people are going to do an um, automation way through devops for the application deployment and uh, development process 
and we are going to host it on the cloud environment. That's why the DevOps and uh, cloud are going to be in hand in hand. That's why we, it makes the demand for DevOps. Is it clear? Now let's make it interactive. Is it clear? Yes, 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 it is fine. Yeah, Hemant, one question was asked by Naveen. Uh, uh, in DevOps, what kind of roles and activities we can do? Some yes. did, did you uh, did we discuss this? Yeah, a bit we had discussed on previously. So uh, that depends upon like the project where you are landing here. So let's say <clears throat> so one is in uh, DevOps development. So in DevOps development, what you are going to do is you are going to develop all these. I mean, install your tool stack, or configure pipelines, and uh, maintaining your uh, infrastructure. All this comes as in development. Whereas next one is a DevOps support. So what we are going to do here? So we are going to have like four or five projects tagged to your uh, uh, particular team. And if any issues are there in their projects, let's say there will be some uh, deployment failures, okay, or they need some uh, help to configure something. <coughs> so then they are going to reach to you, and uh, they are going to ask you for your help. Like um, they won't have uh, the permissions to their infrastructure. So then you are the person who are going to do that. So one is a development, the other will be your. Uh, a support role in the same way with that will goes for your cloud environment charger aws engineer or a cloud engineer so uh, he is going to set up your environment and the person cloud support engineer is going to maintain it or any support kind of issues they are can encounter that will go to your cloud support team. 